Learning Objective 2-2, prepare journal entries for investments carried at fair value. So you're going to carry, remember again, we have the 20 and 50% thresholds. And fair value is going to exist when you don't can't exercise significant influence. This is usually going to be less than 20%. It's not exactly, it could be more than 20%. It, the threshold could be less than 20%. What's critical is that the company doesn't have the ability to influence dividends or some kind of operations. Um, there are other factors here. So if there's a majority shareholder, let's say you have 40%, but there's a majority shareholder that holds 60%. So you have no say in anything at all. You're just there for the ride. You just sit in the back seat and the majority shareholder makes all the decisions. You can jump up and down, yell dividends all you want, and the majority shareholder just doesn't care because you don't because they have the whole they own the whole company and you're just a little piddly non-controlling interest. So you have no control, therefore you don't have significant influence, and you could use the fair value method. So um, again, that 20 to 50% range is approximate, but there are other factors that can come into play that would allow you to um, use that not have significant influence and use the fair value method. So when you use the fair value method, and I'll give you an example in a moment, you record your investment at total cost. And then at each balance sheet date, you adjust the investment to the fair va to fair value. And the adjustment to fair value is going to go to income unless this happens to be a long-term investment which would in turn then be recorded the the gain or loss would go to other comprehensive. So if you remember from intermediate accounting of financial reporting trading account securities gains and losses go to income. But if you have held for sale securities, which are usually considered to be more long-term investments, held for sale securities, gains or losses could go to other comprehensive income instead. That's like a shoebox, you know, it's kind of like a place. The, the gains or losses go to other comprehensive income and they just sit there and wait until you sell the investment. When you sell the investment, then the gains or losses come out of the shoebox and then they go into income and retained earnings. So this statement here that changes in fair value are recorded in income, that applies to trading account securities. And if they're um, held for sale securities, then it's going to be, um, it's going to go to OCI. Now, when the investee declares a dividend, that's also going to be income, no matter which method you're using. And that's why we don't want you to, um, we won't, don't want you to use the fair value method if you have significant influence, because you have significant influence. Then when the, you could push the company to pay dividends, and when they declare the dividends, you could record that as income. We don't want you to be able to manufacture income in that way. So Ajax purchases 40% of Barclay for $200,000. And at the time, Barclays net assets have a book value of $400,000, fair value of $465,000. And on March 31st, dividend Barclay pays a dividend of 1500. And also the fair value of Barclays investment is $207,000. The way we would account for the initial investment would be a debit would be a debit to investment in Barclay stock for the amount of the investment in this case two hundred thousand dollars and I guess credit cash assuming you paid cash and then when you receive this dividend of fifteen hundred dollars you're going to debit cash for fifteen hundred dollars and just credit dividend income. And what this does is it goes straight to the P&L, of course, to the income statement. But again, this underlines why if you you can't use the fair value method if you have significant influence. If you have significant influence, then you could just make these dividends for yourself. And of course, we don't want you to be able to do that. Now, then you walk, when the fair value goes up to $207,000, 
at the next balance sheet and you're going to revalue this to fair value at every balance sheet date then you can write up the investment to 207,000 right now it's on your books for 200 fair value is 27 so you could write it up by seven thousand dollars so I'm going to go 207 minus 200 is seven thousand dollars and I'm going to debit investment in Barclay stock for seven thousand dollars and I'm going to credit unrealized gain on Barclay stock for seven thousand dollars and that would be my mark to market adjustment now a few things about this if you have any changes resulting from stock dividends stock splits reverse splits um you're still gonna you're not gonna record anything at all for this because the investment still has the same fundamental value that it had and if the market value changes then that's going to be reflected in the change in market value if you purchase additional shares you're going to record those purchases at cost and then adjust it to market value as you know at the end of the period again now if you buy enough shares to where you get um, significant influence then you would start using the equity method and you would shift over to the equity method at that point now it used to be that you had to go back and adjust it retroactively and do a prior period adjustment that's no longer the case that's been changed um, which is nice because now something complicated is gone and you don't have to study it uh, if you sell shares then obviously it's going to come out of your asset value and it's going to be recorded there's going to be a gain or loss if this was um, available for sale securities that were going to other comprehensive income so the, previously the gains and losses went to um, other comprehensive income they need to come out of other comprehensive income and they and they go to the income statement if you sell all the shares everything that you put into the shoebox OCI is going to come out if you sold a proportion of the shares then you need to calculate what proportion you sold and then that portion is going to come into the P&L here's a quick question for you securities calculate fair value and invest these dividends declared would a be eliminating consolidation b the investors income from investment c decrease the investors investment account D, increase the investor's investment account, E, none of the above. And the answer is, B, the investor's income from investment.